I'm Will Doyle, and I'm the game director on House of Ashes, the third part of the Dark Pictures anthology. So you may have seen some of the previews that we've put out already, and some of the levels that we've already shown from the game. Today, I want to show you how choices can impact some of those levels, giving you a few different playthroughs to find out how your choices can change this story. If you have any questions about what you're going to see, myself and some other members of the dev team will be available on Reddit for an AMA on the 15th of September. See you there. In the Dark Pictures games, we always want you to think about what it is you're doing. So even when you're presented with a button prompt, sometimes you still have to think about what to do. In this playthrough, you get one of the first glimpses of the uh, outline of our creature, the silhouette of it there. As you can see, a good burst with the assault rifle will see it off, but not kill it. We gotta go through it. You won't make it. The other way is safe. No, I'll follow the trail. Jason makes the call there. Chooses to go through the middle. But they're still on us here. So again, wanted to make it clear that there is more than one of these creatures. The Marines are facing is a host of these monsters. Just get his knife out there and just give me enough chance to shoot it back. You can see Merwin can perish in this story in a variety of different ways. Keeping him alive does prove valuable, though. I don't know, man. It was not supposed to play out like this. Any call signs? This is King. Contact, contact. Taking fire. Does anyone call me? Over. That's Rachel. Nick is keen to get back to help oh. Rachel. Mailman 2 and actual help copy over. Damn. Let me go. Listen, you leave me here. Slowing us down. We need to get to Rich. I said leave me. I'll hold him off. Marlin, those are not Iraqi. Whatever the fuck they are, they're mine. Go. I'm not leaving a man behind. Simplify. I'm not leaving a man behind. Did you buy it with me? Okay, let's try that again. And this time, have a look at some of the different branches in this scene. This way. This time, Jason picks the longer, safer route. Is it as safe as he thinks? Doesn't look like it. Here we're going into another of the keep calm moments. We're going to match the button presses to the heartbeat to stay as quiet as we can. Still on us, getting closer. And oh dear. And there we see yet another of Moen's deaths.
God, I hate this place. I don't know, man. It was not supposed to play out like this. Any call signs? This is King. Contact, contact. Taking fire. Does anyone call me? Over. That's right, Trump. King, this is Mailman 21 Actual. Save him. Over. King, this is Mailman 21 Actual. How copy? Over. Damn it. One of the things we tried to get across with the design of this temple is that it's really big and it's really deep. And using the depth meter to show how far you, you go in this place, we wanted to give the impression that it just goes on and on. So the red flares are used a lot throughout the game. And actually across the dark pictures, series so far we've sometimes used red light as a signifier of danger Damn it. and we really wanted in this game to to use color more sort of red and the blue here the uh, blue of the lights above and the red flare very important the opening of the game uh, has got very strong bright light in uh, as you go through iraq in daytime um, and then coming down into here uh, into the darkness. We had a danger that the whole thing could just become monotone. Uh, so we wanted to use as much color as possible. You don't think I can do it? You don't believe in me? There's no use in dwelling on it. We need to focus on the task ahead and find a way out of this place. The hell is that? Subsidence? From the aftershocks? Again, remember that these two haven't seen anything down here yet, uh, anything unnatural. So they have no idea of what's in store for them. The light could guide the Marines to us. And this equipment uh, that's down here is what Eric picked up on his satellite, uh, thinking that the signature that he saw uh, was a chemical weapons depot. We need to find some. But in fact, it's all this old archaeological gear. So people have been down here before them, but they haven't got out. Such a, a site like this would be a huge discovery for the world, uh, but the news never made it out. So we've got a load of their gear here, including a photograph of them. And the story of these archaeologists was actually first uh, hinted at in Man of Medan, where we had a newspaper article uh, reporting on these missing expedition. And now here they are, two games later, we learn what happened to them. September the 24th. Just the story plays out, the Hodgson expedition uh, is detailed through uh, many secrets. So if I access the secrets menu, um, you can see that there are 50 different items to find across the game. Um, and together, they tell the story of what happened to these people. A Sumerian relic recovered from a dig site in the Hashemite kingdom of Iraq. So Randolph's journal has been torn to pieces and scattered across the, uh, the temple. Across the course of House of Ashes, uh, you can piece it together. Uh, there are 10 separate journal entries, each of which has their own cinematic to accompany it. The tomb lies somewhere on the border of Iraq. Um, as you unlock these, uh, you'll also unlock uh, bonus features from the main menu, which string them all together into a single cinematic and include extra pieces that you haven't seen before. Playing through the whole game, there are two separate uh, bonus features connected to the journal. This place is starting to make me feel a little uneasy. 
You'll see as you play through, you'll come across the corpses of these people um, and you'll learn more about what it was that they faced and what they were ultimately hoping to do down here to stop these creatures. So that will probably come in handy later. This exploration is exploring this huge space and shows that sometimes you need to find things in these environments uh, in order to progress. There's some sort of puzzle elements uh, in House of Ashes that you'll come across. But this looks like the gasoline. Eric, come give me a hand with these cans. About time we had a little luck. <sighs> How's the lake holding up? Lake? Oh, you mean the prosthesis. I lost my leg back on the highway. Don't. I still feel guilty. I didn't make it easy on your rage. I know that. You weren't to blame for that crash. Mom, let's get to work. So their relationship is still thorny. They've got a lot to work through between the two of them. We caught there a glimpse that they're also not alone down here. Shine a light on the tank. Ah, oh, shit. What's wrong? Fuel tube's worn loose. The damn valve is leaking. Can it be fixed? We have to secure the tube before starting the generator. There's gotta be something here to fix it. You got it? I've got it. Is this a good time to talk? That depends. What's on your mind? Back at the base, you said we'd talk when the time was right. It looks like we've got the whole place to ourselves. This has got to be the worst date ever. There's a lot of different branching going on here uh, in the story. So the, the way that Eric approaches this scene uh, depends heavily on what I'd done earlier in, in the story. Um, so he can be distant or close. Hold the fuel pipe. As he does here, he can try and uh, get some intimacy, or he can keep a professional distance. And my own choices here can swing it in different ways as well, as to how I respond to him. Look at the state of these. They're shot. Feels like so long since we worked on something together. Same time feels like yesterday. Why do we leave things like this? I tried. But you made it so hard for me to stay. Rachel and Eric were teenage sweethearts um, and they have a lot of history behind them. So even though they made the decision to part, she's still always a bit reluctant. So Past year or so, my head's been buried in Kalis and I was blind to anything else. Sounds less like an apology and more like an excuse. It's not either, it's the truth. Bullshit. You had no idea that Kalis would even work. Rach. Say what's on your mind. I've missed you, Rach. Like you wouldn't believe. Back then, I don't know, things seem confused, but now, it just seems simpler. Maybe there's hope for us after all. That should do the trick. Let's fire up.
Hello? Shit! Ah! The problem that they have here is that they are outgunned and they're only armed with sidearms and the Iraqi soldier that they're facing has got an assault rifle and is better trained for the situation in a way than they are. Something simple in this goddamn place? You're not serious. That looks decades old. It's all we have. Can you see him? Yeah, he's coming. <sighs> so Rachel throws a rock. have to quietly get past. So we've managed to get past the Iraqi soldier with a bit of breathing space. That will mean that later on, Eric should have a bit more time. I've got you, Rich. I've got you. No! Ah! Help me! Eric finds himself in the pressure situation. Just needs to try and keep that rope taut to stop it from fraying. Rachel, grab onto something! And now, I can't see. let's see if we can just hold on. Come on! Fuck! Damn it, Rachel, will you hold still? Okay, so I could just cut her loose here, which would guarantee Eric's survival. But he's got hope yet, and he's going to hold on. So here he sees the approaching torches. That is Nick and Jason coming along. So if we can just hold on. But it's getting too much. He has another chance here. If the Iraqi soldier had turned up, he would have killed him after this. But because we got that breathing space, Nick turns up. Hold on! Now the only reason Nick turns up here is because Merwin perished earlier, giving him a bit more time to come forward. Almost every decision you make in this game is going to have some effect further down the line. The biggest ones are represented by bearings, but all of the smaller ones affect traits or relationships, which in turn, later on in the game, can have huge impact. Simple this goddamn place. You're not serious. That looks decades old. It's all we have. Can you see him? Yeah, he's coming. to us. Rachel! I got you, Rach. I got you. Try 
trying to keep as still as I can to again stop that rope from breaking. But Eric's in real trouble. Rachel, grab onto something! Here he's he's gonna get pulled over as well. He's not careful. Come on! Fuck! Damn it, Rachel, will you hold still? But so far the rope's holding because I managed to keep as still as I could and to succeed on that first so QTE. Sorry, I'm so sorry. It still is putting Eric under pressure here and he has the decision of whether or not to cut the rope. He is holding on. This scene was one of the very first dilemmas that we actually thought up for this game. A lot of the story came from this moment. And it's actually inspired by a real life incident that happened, which is detailed in the film Touching the Void, in a documentary film, about a climbing accident that happened. Eric is still holding on holding on, but oh dear, it's been clipped. Oh, Rachel. So again, this scene plays out in very different ways here. If we'd have got a bit more distance on the Iraqi soldier, he wouldn't have turned up at that point, and Eric could have kept on hanging on, but because Eric chose to stay hanging on, he didn't make it. And as for Rachel, she's plunged down into the dark. <laughs> 